Hello, my name is John. I'm the curator of the Small Artifacts Museum at the Isle of Wight Steam Railway. Welcome to a selection of interesting items from the gallery, both before and after the grouping of the three island railway companies within the Southern Railway in 1923, items used in the operation of the lines were often idiosyncratic. Such items as remain are rare and are thus highly collectible. Over 50 or so years, a number of artifacts have been assembled and the following are a sample of those on display in the small artifacts museum adjoining the Haven Street shop. It was necessary for railwaymen of grades such as drivers and guards to possess accurate timepieces, particularly after the introduction of standardised time throughout the country. Watches had to be accurate and reliable, which meant they were beyond the means of people with modest incomes. Hence the practice grew of railways issuing watches to appropriate employees. Examples shown are from English, American and Swiss makers over a period of many decades. The age of this board is uncertain, but the painted wording clearly dates from after the closure of the direct route from Newport to Sandown in 1956. Prior to that date, the shortest route to Ventnor would have been via Merston. Although most of the Isle of Wight Railway's refreshment rooms were not commercially viable, surviving silverware shows how much care was taken with it. The ornate, ewer-shaped milk jug made by Collis & Co of Birmingham predates 1888 when the makers were bought out. And in complete contrast is the tiny cream jug by Elkington's, which depends for its effect on the infinitely subtle proportions. Ventnor suffered from the poor location of its two stations. One involved a severe climb for those using it, while the other required a long walk from the town centre. In order that potential passengers for Ventnor Town, later known as Ventnor West, did not give up on the long trudge, signs like this were provided strategically. Thus they were encouraged to feel they had not lost their way. Picture a bitterly cold January in 1891. Passengers were coming from all over the country to the island, many of them for health reasons. They had been nice and snug on the mainland carriages, but when they got to the Isle of Wight Railway, there were no foot warmers and they were bitterly cold when they got to Ventnor, so much so that many complaints were made. The item you're going to see now probably results from the Isle of Wight Railway having to rather quickly remedy this by foot warmers in their carriages. Before the advent of steam or electrical carriage heating, some relief from winter cold was gained by the use of carriage foot warmers. Now, this example from the Isle of Wight Railway would have been filled with hot water or possibly soda acetate crystals. The limited effectiveness of these devices was aggravated 
by a Victorian fashion for wearing rubber-soled shoes, which could stick to the foot warmers as they cooled. Railway carriage keys still have a use today, and ones like this ultra-rare example from the Freshwater, Yarmouth and Newport Railway show how carefully companies marked their property. In World War I, railwaymen were in an exempt occupation for military service. However, they found themselves victims of persons who handed out white feathers to men of military age who were not in uniform. Hence, enamel badges and supporting papers such as these items were issued to them. Prior to 1923, Isle of Wight ferries were operated jointly by the mainline railway companies serving Portsmouth. Even then, it was unusual for such humble vessels, each to have individually engraved glass and silverware, such as this milk jug and sherry glass from the paddle steamer Duchess of Fife. The glass is a most improbable survivor from the ship that was scrapped in 1929. Prior to the introduction of loudspeakers, it was customary for handbells to be rung at Termini a few minutes before the departure of the train. This bell was used at Ride Pierhead and bears the initials of the London Brighton and South Coast Railway, one of the co-owners of the line between Ride Pierhead and Ride St John's Road. <laughs> Supplied to Ventnor Station by a local clockmaker, W. L. Hoskin, between 1866 and 1972, this large timepiece has a plain case reflecting its outside location under the platform awning. By contrast, the movement is a well-finished and sophisticated one of regulator specification with a precision escapement. Large lamps of these kinds were placed on buffer stops to act as a warning for shunting operations both night and day. Church was the name of a locomotive delivered to the Isle of Wight Railway in 1883. During delivery to Bembridge Harbour, she was lost overboard and had to be rescued by Admiralty lifting gear. Like all locomotives of her railway, she had no number, only a name. Enamel badges of this kind were issued to lookouts in track gangs who were entrusted to warn of approaching trains. Lookouts were issued with warning horns to sound upon the approach of a train. <laughs> Lookouts 
Large railway companies had boundary marker signs in great number. The tiny freshwater Yarmouth and Newport Railway would have had very few, and this one is a rare survivor. The restoration of Isle of Wight Railway carriage number 10 to fully usable condition was the subject of a Channel 4 TV program. This stained glass and etched top light, although undamaged, could not be reused as it is not made from toughened glass, so a stronger replacement has had to be provided. Instead of being etched by the dangerous chemical hydrofluoric acid, satisfactory results have been obtained by using computer-controlled sand blasting. It's not known if this platform sign from Ashy often called a running inboard, originated from the Isle of Wight Central Railway or the earlier Ride and Newport Railway. Whatever its provenance, it is a very rare item. Oil containers were acquired in quantity by the old time railways. This one comes from the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway, but it is not known whether or not it was used on the Isle of Wight. This uniform cap badge was issued to an employee of the Freshwater, Yarmouth and Newport line between 1913 and 1923. It has been conserved by a leading fabric conservator. When H.K. Day, the general manager of the Isle of Wight Railway, achieved 50 years of service in 1919, he was presented with this salver, which was by a leading London maker. Presumably, by inheritance, this salver ended up in Brisbane, Australia, from where the steam railway repatriated it. When a greater light than could be generated by an oil lamp was required, acetylene lamps were employed. These utilised gas produced by the action of water on calcium carbide. But although they produced a powerful light, there were certain safety problems associated with their use. Under some circumstances, they could explode. <laughs> 